you to CTBH for giving us this opportunity uh, to present our project for the Abu Dhabi Investment Council headquarters building. Uh, and thank you to also for this award, which recognizes the contribution of all those involved. And believe me, there were a lot of people involved. Uh, I'm also very grateful um, to the Investment Council, our client, for their presence here today and, uh, and for the opportunity which they gave us to work on this magnificent project. So um, over the course of the next 30 minutes, Peter and I are going to cover a lot of ground. We're going to talk about the brief for the project, the context of what was happening in Abu Dhabi at the time, uh, the concept and its development, um, the engineering aspects, of course, and, uh, and the project delivery. So this is a project that was won on the basis of, a, of an international competition, uh, and we received an invitation to participate towards the end of 2007. Uh, the client's aspiration was set out in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a concise and aspirational brief, which called for two 25-story towers on two <coughs> adjacent plots, each tower to accommodate 1,000 people. Uh, and the client asked for a contemporary design using modern technology, uh, a design which considered the region's architectural heritage and used modern materials to, to create an outstanding landmark building. A red rag to a bull for most architects, I'm sure you'll agree. So um, the context, what was going on in Abu Dhabi at the time? Well, it was quite an important time uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, the Abu Dhabi 2030 plan uh, had recently been published, uh, setting out a comprehensive development framework based on the principles of cultural and environmental <coughs> responsibility. The Mazdar Initiative, which seeks to place Abu Dhabi in the forefront of development in renewable technologies, uh, was gathering pace and receiving worldwide attention. And the Estadama Environmental Standard, a localized version of LEED, uh, was about to be published. The site for the project, um, situated on Abu Dhabi Island, uh, and served as a gateway to the city. Uh, there was little of architectural context in the immediate vicinity, but the site looked north to Reem Island and east towards the sea uh, and an adjacent nature reserve. In terms of the wider architectural context, of course, um, there was inspiration to be drawn from the Islamic um, architectural tradition, both in terms of its rich geometric uh, composition and also in its vernacular buildings, from which one can learn valuable lessons for dealing with a harsh desert climate. <coughs> so in terms of a concept, our starting point was two simple cylinders, uh, a circular plan providing the most uh, economical wall-to-floor ratio, providing the maximum volume with minimum surface area. A preliminary solar analysis reminded us that the, uh, the most severe of solar exposure would be on the east and west elevations, with the northern elevation requiring relatively little protection. So we, we quickly resolved that our design concept should be informed by three key drivers, namely the principles of Islamic design, inspiration from nature, and sustainable technology. We began to explore how we might use the geometrical principles underlying Islamic design to develop a coherent geometrical solution that we could use in plan, section, and elevation. And the geometry began to suggest an articulated plan, seen in the top right, with an, an, an actual north-south orientation, creating a front and a rear elevation, as it were. And from this, we began to generate the form of the towers, sculpted around the core, narrow at the base and at the top, but broader around the intermediate floors. Sky gardens were introduced in the most heavily exposed uh, southerly aspect of the building to reduce solar gain whilst providing an amenity space for users. And the crown was cut uh, at, a, at an angle to maximize solar exposure for a, a series of, of roof-mounted photovoltaics. We recognized the opportunity at this stage for eroding the elevational grid to generate the diagrid structure uh, and also the cladding concepts. So at the same time as, as this work was going on, we were very keen to find a way of protecting the most heavily exposed parts of the facade from the intense solar radiation and began to investigate how we might reinterpret the concept of the mashrabiya, a traditional device used to achieve privacy, reduce glare and solar gain. And we were also very keen to, uh, to, to develop the mashrabiya concept within the same unified geometry. Uh, we began to realize the uh, disadvantages of a fixed shading device and began to think about the many benefits of a dynamic shading system. Here you see the, the relative merits and demerits set out. Uh, clearly, uh, traditional curtain walling, which is extensively used in the M Middle East, um, relies on heavily tinted glass. It provides very poor natural daylight, um, with the result, ironically, that one needs uh, a great deal of artificial light internally uh, and excessive use of internal blinds. Fixed shading obviously goes some way to resolving this, but it, it has a limited geometry and therefore can't be optimized for all conditions. Whereas a dynamic shading screen, we felt, with its flexible, flexible geometry, uh, would derive greater benefits, allow us to use less heavily tinted glass and all the benefits that would bring. 
So um, the decision to adopt a, a dynamic mashrabiya was crystallized when one of our colleagues, Abdul Majid Karanu, struck upon the idea of an umbrella-like um, component shown in the sequence. And um, here you see the, uh, the first, uh, first iteration of the mashrabiya as we saw it, and, um, and in this final sequence, the three opening positions, uh, which we finally um, uh, resolved upon. So as we began to visualize um, how we might um, use these components, we became convinced that we'd found an exciting concept, particularly when Arab's um, preliminary analysis suggested that we would be able to reduce the cooling load by up to 20%. So we looked for precedents because we knew we were doing something new, and we were somewhat reassured when we found these umbrellas in the courtyard of the Medina Mosque in Mecca, designed by Fry Otto and uh, Bodo Rausch back in the 1980s, and, um, quite for over 20 years with minimal maintenance. Can you run the video, please? So as part of our competition submission, um, we, uh, through the offices of our research and development group uh, in-house, we ran this, uh, we wrote this JavaScript application to demonstrate how the mashrabiya uh, would operate through the year as they track the sun's path around the building. And you can perhaps see from this application uh, that we were able to simulate uh, the operation of the mashrabiya at different times of the year. And at this stage, we had already uh, <coughs> begun to scribe the mashrabiya uh, around the most heavily exposed parts of the building, leaving the north elevation uh, unexpo uh, exposed because it didn't require uh, such protection. Thank you for the video. So from this application, we were also able to produce a number of uh, movie files and a number of, uh, of animations, which we were able to, to use with our competition submission to explain the concept to our client, our would-be client. And we developed the geometry further uh, during the competition stage and modeled a section of the building to illustrate uh, the buildup of the various layers of structure, facade and mashrabiya, all working on the basis of the same node points. We submitted our entry and were delighted some months later when we heard we won the competition. So having won the competition, of course, we then had to deal with the brief, uh, develop the brief, uh, working jointly with the client. One of the first <coughs> issues we came across was the need for more shared accommodation at ground floor level. Our competition entry had assumed that the buildings would sit in a landscape setting, but it became apparent that we would uh, both be able to link the two sites and would need to introduce a podium block. Now, this podium block provided us with an opportunity um, to resolve the various entrance and access requirements of the building for both public, staff, service, and, uh, and VIPs who were provided with a, a discreet and distinct um, access onto a landscape podium deck. Uh, we spent a great deal of time uh, at this stage um, developing the core and tuning the geometry of the floor plate to ensure that the, the plan would be both functional, efficient, and economical. Uh, we also spent time developing the section, integrating services and structure, ensuring that the actuators uh, wouldn't obstruct <coughs> views from the building, and thinking about how it would be accessed for maintenance. Throughout this period, we were also refining the, the geometry, and these uh, two sequences illustrate how the final geometry was ultimately generated, both for the floor plate and the mashrabiya. And you see here a relatively simple sequence uh, showing a series of interlocking circles, uh, the floor plate then being um, described by a series of offsets, uh, the site then being described by a combination of those floor plates, and here, running from the same sequence, um, the build-up of the mashrabiya in its um, open, mid-open, and closed <coughs> position. <coughs> Having generated the geometry in this way, we were... Oops, sorry, I beg your pardon. Having generated the, uh, the geometry in this way, we were then able to articulate the form of the building uh, that allowed us to create one integrated model with which we continued to tune the, uh, tune the design throughout the development process. And if you could run the second movie, please. So having, having created uh, this uh, unified uh, geometry and this one integrated model, we were then able to script uh, in, uh, in Rhino in this particular instance, which is running in the background, um, uh, so that we could automate generation of principal <coughs> building components. So here you see the script running, um, creating the, uh, the floor plates. And as the script 
runs, it'll then move on to extract the structure. And then, and next it will uh, reveal the curtain walling, which is as an offset to the structure. And then finally the mash rabia. And of course the benefit of this model was that we were able to, to, to work with the geometry as we, as we develop the design. Thank you for the movie. So the development of this integrated model was to prove invaluable during the delivery of the stages as it allowed us to coordinate each of the principal elements with confidence. And here you see in, in, in diagrammatic form the floor plates which were generated, the cladding which was generated, the structure which was generated, and the mash rabia was generated, all from one integrated model. But all of this work, of course, was running in parallel with the work being undertaken by our colleagues of Arabs, which Peter will now describe. Thanks, Peter. So I just want to quickly just um, uh, describe where Arup fits into, into all of this. We're the uh, design engineering consultants for the whole project. So that, that's our scope there, uh, structural and MEP engineering, but also, as you'll see there, amongst a host of specialists, uh, facade engineering and um, specialist lighting. Um, it's been a, a, a huge effort. I mean, the, in total, we're, we're, there were 142 just engineers made a contrib contribution to this project, and they were uh, distributed all around the world, as you can see here, um, as far away as Vancouver, Sydney, Australia, London, Leeds, Milan, and of course, uh, in Abu Dhabi. Um, one of the things, as I say, um, that we first started to get involved in um, at the very early stage with Peter was that this is almost the first step after the origami, just understanding how these units actually moved, you know, what, what ge geometry did they occupy? Um, and this told us a couple of things. Um, first of all, that they actually went backwards um, as they opened, and also that we needed to introduce um, this, um, this arm here, this blue line, which uh, prevented a huge shear force being applied at the front face of the actuator, which would have damaged it. Um, that enabled us, again, with, with aiders to set the, the zones within which these uh, things would operate. Um, and also then we had to then define the mechanisms, the hinges, the sliders. Um, and th that was all, and, and also I also should mention the, the fabric selection, um, our materials engineers uh, went through numerous options, looking at the, the, the you know, the climate, the, the aggressive nature of the sun, um, and we ended up with a, a, a Teflon-coated PTFE mesh for the Mashabia panels. Um, we also then, at that time, developed uh, the, the structure of the Mashabia. Um, you know, you, you might ask, you know, why not do a, a mesh around the whole building, which was one of the things we looked at. Where, where the, the whole thing is just a, a tensile mesh that's anchored on the north side. The problem with that was that we were struggling to control uh, horizontal movements. Um, we also uh, struggled to control the actuator housing. And uh, also we limited ourselves in terms of um, constructability. So you'd have to build the whole mesh and then come around and retrofit each part. Um, and uh, rather than the sort of unitized system that um, Peter will talk about shortly. So that's effectively what we ended up with. Um, so you can see this is a typical structure of the Mashabir. You've got the cantilever arms that come out from the, from the building. You've got this Y-shaped um, uh, structure in the middle that, that holds an actuator. Um, that actuator pushes this point in and out, which in turn makes these points slide up and down. And um, that then folds the Mashrabia panels, uh, each of these triangles, oops, each of these triangles folds in this um, configuration. So that's a sort of, that became the basic unit of the, um, the Mashrabia. So once we knew um, what we wanted this thing to, to look like and how we, and be structured and we knew what materials we wanted to use. We, we then, and we, and we knew how it was moving, we, we next then needed to know um, how, when it was going to move. Um, I think everybody's familiar with the climate, the climate in, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, lots of sun, um, very hot in the summer. 
Um, and what we were trying to do was basically um, not shut the sun out completely, but take out the bit of this, the part of the sun which was direct, intense, and of no use to us. So this, this, the trick was to, and, and this just gives you an idea, this is, this is a chunk of the building, no mashrabia, um, something like 500 watts a square meter on the, on the uh, I mean, this is actually uh, five o'clock uh, mid-season, still 500 watts a square meter on the, on the southwest face. Um, but using the, um, the mashrabia in different configurations and applied to various faces of the building at uh, different times of the day and year, we could tune the operation so that we did uh, what I just mentioned. So we, we kept the, 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 the direct intense sun uh, that would have caused glare and we would have had to have cooled it to get rid of it out of the building. And we, that allowed us to use very light blinds uh, to control the background daylight so we could, use, we could, we could light the space um, with usable background daylight. And this gives you an idea, just compared with the previous slide, of how you can limit those, those, um, those energies on the, the facade. So this, this is just gives a, a sort of snapshot of, um, to describe what I've just been talking about. This on the left-hand side is um, no mashrabia. So that's heavy blinds. Not much of the floor plate uh, can be uh, usefully daylit. The blind, as soon as the sun shines on the facade, the blinds come down. Um, thick blinds, so you can't, no decent light penetrates the space. On the right-hand side, uh, if you use the mashrabia to keep the, the direct sun off, you can then welcome the background daylight into the space through a, a nice light blind. And this just this, this illustrates that uh, a bit more. So this is typical times December. The, the green is the space on the floor which is usefully daylit with, um, by natural daylight. The blue is where we need um, lighting, artificial lighting, and the red is where it's just a little, probably a little bit too bright. And you can see through the year, um, you actually achieve quite a lot of, um, of naturally lit space. We also um, use the same modeling or, or the same data uh, to uh, run some very detailed thermal models. Uh, and the results of those uh, showed that if you, this is a, a cooling load through a typical day, so you can see that there's, um, there's a, a significant reduction in the load from the sun that gets into the building. And there's also a small reduction in load from internal lights because of course you don't need the lights so much. Um, benefits over a year are a significant saving and you could read you know, cost, you could read carbon, but the, the message is that the, 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 the cost in carbon associated with um, refrigeration because of the sun are, are, le are less than half. Um, one other thing that slightly um, um, makes this slightly unusual in terms of its impacts on the permanent structure is um, how to actually fix it to the permanent structure. It, these, these things are quite significant bits of structure in their own right, and they put pretty big loads um, on the permanent structure. So um, this sh these next few slides just show a couple of uh, instances where we had to modify the perimeter frame to accommodate them. And in certain areas, we, we had to do more detailed analysis just to check that the, the local, um, uh, locally to the Mashrabia connection points, we weren't overstressing the primary frame. In some areas, uh, we had to in, introduce stiffeners. So this is just a reflection of, of, of that. And then that's what these things look like um, fabricated. And that's one of them, a typical uh, piece uh, installed on site. Thanks, Peter. So, um, <laughs> construction commenced on site with an enabling works contract in a fairly traditional manner um, by local contractor NSCC. They uh, undertook the secant piling, uh, excavation, uh, and the piling works. And this was then followed by a main contract uh, by Alpha Tame Carillion. And here we see the basement waterproofing, uh, pile caps having been finished, and the beginnings of the slip forming of the core, all fairly traditional work. Uh, William Hares with the steelwork subcontractor and they provided the diagrid uh, and also the steelwork for the podium block. 
And then, of course, we had the all-important facade and mashrabia uh, subcontract. So the, uh, the successful subcontractor, Yuanda, not only had a, a, a very impressive manufacturing capability in, in Shenyang in northern China, but it also, and, and quite importantly, recently acquired the engineering capability uh, from a well-known engineering firm by the name of Schmidlin, uh, who had been responsible for the Gherkin in London, amongst others. But we also uh, were impressed uh, when we undertook a factory inspection uh, by the fact that they'd taken it upon themselves to build this, uh, this prototype uh, a full-size mock-up. Uh, incidentally, each of these units is story height, so they're four meters tall. And we were very excited when we saw for the first time um, one of these units actually in operation. So this is actually a movie running of the, uh, the first uh, <coughs> mock-up that uh, the contractor had, had built of their own back um, in China. So they were appointed. Uh, there was a lot of detailed design work undertaken, as you can imagine. Uh, there was a lot of testing, uh, exhaustive testing undertaken. Uh, here, uh, wind tunnel testing in France, uh, the only place we could find a wind tunnel big enough to test it. Um, durability testing, paradoxically, was undertaken in Basel in Switzerland. Uh, and here you see this uh, insulated container which was being uh, finished, uh, in which uh, a mushroom unit was subjected to uh, prolonged testing um, uh, to simulate, I think, it's at least a 60-year life. Um, it was sprayed continuously with, uh, with salt water, and, uh, and it had copious amounts of Abu Dhabi desert sand uh, thrown on it. Um, we also um, undertook, uh, this was UV testing of the uh, PTFE fabric that Peter referred to, um, supplied from a, a supplier in Japan. So having passed all those tests and, uh, and completed the detailed design, uh, manufacture commenced. And, um, and the next series of slides really just illustrate the various stages of the Mashrabia manufacturing process, uh, including mold making, uh, preparation, casting, machining, finishing, turning, etc. And some of these images remind me just how easy it is for us as designers um, to become a little disconnected from the manufacturing process and serve as a poignant reminder that when sitting at one's computer, uh, designing to high levels of accuracy as we do every day, uh, someone somewhere still has to make it. And here we see the cantilever arms being um, prepared for shipment. Uh, and each unit was assembled um, and tested uh, in Shenyang before it was then packaged, uh, disassembled, I should say, and repackaged uh, for shipping to Abu Dhabi. And here in Abu Dhabi, each unit was then reassembled, retested, uh, and obviously it was quite an exciting day when we, we saw the first units being uh, uh, installed on the building. So um, the mushroom beer is currently being commissioned. Um, here you see a screenshot of one of the, uh, the screenshots from the control software. The, the mushroom beer units operate um, on a pre-programmed sequence throughout the, the course of the year. The sun, fortunately, behaving in a fairly predictable fashion. There are only a couple of overrides, one of which being for uh, unduly high wind speeds uh, and the other for un uncharacteristically low light levels uh, in the event of a sandstorm, for example. Uh, and here you see another uh, screen from the control system showing each of the mushrabia. They're all um, independently IP addressable, uh, so can be taken out of service if required. And if you could run the uh, final movie, please. When it gets running, you'll see uh, you'll see the uh, the first um, the first in place mushrabia um, actually operating. Here we go. So these were the first six units um, that were erected, um, and, um, and here we see them operating uh, as they would. Um, I say operating as they would. Of course, the default position is actually in the, uh, in the closed position. Um, during the evening, the units will, will fold closed, and as the sun rises in the morning in the east, those units facing the sun will progressively begin to close, and, um, and, and, and those sec that section of closing uh, units will rotate uh, progressively around the building throughout the course of the day. Um, they are infinitely adjustable, but as I said earlier on, we are, have actually settled on three, three positions, so they're either going to be open, mid-open, or closed. And you can see here from the speed of the movement that, that um, it, it'll be pretty much imperceptible to users, bearing in mind that they'll only be going through half a cycle each time. Uh, the interesting thing uh, of this image here, I think, is that uh, Although we focus on the mushrabia units as units themselves, what you actually notice when you're in the building is the, is the window aperture that the, the mushrabia units create. Um, and so what one sees when one's in the building is this, this window aperture uh, opening and closing. The, um, the white reflective steelwork in the background of this image is actually a ceremonial lighting um, uh, assembly, which mimics the, uh, the, the line of the diagrid structure behind.
I think we're probably done with that. Thanks very much. So here we see an image of the building taken, I think, probably about two months ago, just before the commissioning of the, of the Mashrabiyah commenced. Um, as I say, we won't actually ever see these units in this configuration again. In future, they will all default to the, to the open position. Uh, this is a shot of the north elevation showing the lighting, uh, uh, ceremonial lighting feature. And um, of course, the project wasn't just about um, the geometry which we've been speaking about, nor indeed the Mashrabiyah. It was first, first and foremost about creating a comfortable environment for users of the building. And the whole premise of the design is how to manage the external environment in order to create an attractive internal environment for users of the building. So I'd like to conclude by showing a handful of images of the building interior. And here we see uh, the reception to the Investment Council Tower. I should perhaps add that the second tower is actually going to be occupied by a, uh, an Islamic bank, which is wholly owned by the council. The, the, the reception area is um, situated within the podium, uh, and the roof of this uh, the structure, I have to give credit to, to a German firm by the name of Lindner, who did an excellent job on this, uh, on this ceiling. Behind the screen in the distance there um, is one of the two uh, restaurants uh, which service the occupants of the tower. And um, to the right, uh, on the mezzanine level above the entrance, is a, a sort of breakout cafeteria. Uh, contained within the, uh, within the podium block, there is also a, an auditorium uh, and a pair of prayer rooms for male and female. Uh, here we see an image of one of the ablution rooms to one of the um, prayer rooms. The core areas within the tower are very cool, uh, white glass um, uh, faced. And within each of the towers, pretty much each floor is a department in its own right. So each floor has its own uh, individual reception uh, areas. Uh, this particular reception area looks out onto one of the sky gardens. And here we see one of the sky gardens um, yet to be planted, but uh, for those of you that know uh, or who may have been in, a, in, a, in, a, in an oasis setting or in and amongst palm trees, there's something quite evocative, I think, about, about this image in terms of the, 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 the reference to palms. Uh, a typical core area within the uh, executive offices, a typical um, circulation area within the, uh, the high management suite, here looking onto an internal uh, sky garden, and, and beyond uh, a waiting area to a, a spiral stair uh, linking the two upper floors of the building. So this is the final image of the presentation, and, and it shows what I've been talking about earlier, which is the default position of the Mashrabiyah uh, as they open um, at night. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.